Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we are talking about airplane crashes in the United States, as they are just well, not just the U.S. but also Canada. I should be fair there. This is because we're going to talk about these flights through the TV program on Discovery Channel called "Why Planes Crash." And last time we talked about. A flight in Washington D.C. It was Florida Air Florida Flight 90. It crashed into a bridge in Washington D.C. and then plummeted into the Potomac River. Not everybody died. A number number of people did, of course, but a number of people did survive. And they determined that the pilot was basically totally responsible. He did not take responsibility in getting that ice off of the wings, among other problems. Mm -hmm. Well, today we're going to talk about some other air crashes that occurred in North America. One involves John F. Kennedy Jr., not、uh, John F. Kennedy Sr., the、mm -hmm. guy who was shot in Texas back in 1963. He was、uh, involved. At least the son here was involved. In a plane crash in 1999, and also we're going to talk about Air France Flight 358 that crashed at Canada's Toronto Pearson International Airport because of severe weather. And we'll be talking about these two crashes today. So hey, let's not delay any further. Let's read through the entire contents of the lesson right now. News broke of the deaths of John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, and her sister on the morning of July 17, 1999. Despite taking off for a short flight at 8:39 p.m. on July 16th, their aircraft never landed. It wasn't until July 19th that the plane's wreckage was spotted in the Atlantic Ocean. An NTSB report disclosed. That the cause of the crash was likely due to pilot error and spatial disorientation. Kennedy's attempt to land that night was obscured by inclement weather conditions and low visibility from a lack of visual cues such as city lights. As an amateur pilot, Kennedy wasn't fully trained to fly his aircraft in these conditions. As a result, he became disoriented when he lost sight of the horizon. His lack of training and the stress from not being able to properly judge his location resulted in a horrific spiral into the ocean. Not all plane crashes end so tragically, however. On August 2, 2005, authorities gave Air France Flight 358 the all clear to land at Canada's Toronto Pearson International Airport, regardless of the severe weather. When turbulence from high winds, heavy rain, and thunderstorms hampered the pilot's visibility, they overshot the runway by over half its length. Consequently, the plane careened off the runway and came to rest in a Topicoke Creek, 300 meters beyond. When the aircraft landed, its jet fuel ignited. Nevertheless, all 297 passengers. As well as 12 crew members evacuated the plane in less than two minutes, narrowly escaping a fiery death. For more staggering survival stories like these, be sure to check out Discovery's Why Planes Crash this April. Okay, guys, let's talk about the first plane crash here in today's program. It's a、uh, it's a sad one. I remember when this happened because I'm just going to confess. Yeah, I had a big crush on John F. Kennedy Jr. I thought, how he, could you? He was a Democrat. I thought he was the most handsome guy ever. Wow, truly,、mm. so so handsome. Even after he got married, I still would look at his pictures because I just thought he was gorgeous. He married a pretty lady too, named Caroline. Caroline, I think she was a Carolyn, and、mm. his sister's a Caroline.、Okay. Anyway, very very sad that he had to die early、uh, when he was still so so handsome. Well, maybe you'll see him he <laughs> in heaven someday. So news broke. When news breaks, guys, it just means they report the news right then. So news broke. Past tense of the deaths of John F. Kennedy Jr. and his wife, and her sister, her poor sister. They were both in the plane with JFK or JFK Jr. as he was often referred to, 
And the news broke on the morning of July seventeenth, nineteen ninety nine. Wow, it's been a long time already. That is going way back、yeah. into ancient history.、Uh. But this is an example of a plane crash that took place in North America. And this particular program is not just dealing with crashes of big jumbo jets. In this particular case, it's just a small, maybe single engine aircraft yeah, or something like that. A private plane. A yeah. A private plane. A Cessna, maybe. I'm not sure. I need to do some research on the particulars of this crash. But here it says, despite taking off for a short flight on 8:39 p.m. or at 8:39 p.m. on July 16th, their aircraft never landed. So here the word despite means even though, even though they took off for the short flight in the evening、yeah. on July 16th, even though they took off for this short flight. They still never landed. It was just going to be a short little trip. Maybe he was just taking the girls out for a joy ride or something like no, that. No, no, they were just going.、Uh, they had a place out in Martha's Vineyard. Okay, and they were, I think they were for... either going there or going back to D,、uh, to New York City where they lived. It was a very very quick trip. Darn it. Yeah, it should have only taken an hour or so or whatever,、yeah. but they never landed and they never figured out what happened to it until later. It says here in the next sentence, it wasn't until July nineteenth, which was three days later, that the plane's wreckage was spotted in the Atlantic Ocean. I think that's only two days. Uh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Well, okay, nineteen minus sixteen is two three. Two days but, later. Uh, I guess so. I guess the next day was the seventeenth,、okay. eighteen. Well, maybe two and a half days. Uh, something like that. But in any case, here the key word in this sentence is wreckage, which is basically the remains of something that has been basically damaged or destroyed、mm. because of a crash or something. Well, oftentimes, sometimes we see the wreckage of motorcycles or of cars at the sides of roads here in Taiwan, and you think, ooh. What happened、yeah. there? I wonder what happened there. Somebody was probably not being careful. Oh, I hate to see that.、Uh, I saw a I saw a really bad scooter wreck the other day. It's kind of scary to、uh -oh. see. It does happen. The、yeah. driver was okay, thank goodness, but their scooter was wrecked. So, an NTSB report disclosed that the cause of the crash was likely due to pilot error and spatial disorientation. I'll talk about what that means in a minute. If you disclose something, guys, it means you're making something that was previously unknown, or maybe even secret, or you're telling some new information to some folks who didn't know about it before. You disclose. Maybe you have to disclose to your employer one day that you worked for the competition. Uh, oh. Before you took the job with them, and now you're going back to work for them.、Uh, anyway, you have to to tell something or release some information that was secret or not known before. If you disclose something, well, that report that the agency of the government that that just checks out why planes crash, what the reasons for the crash were, this NTSB, they disclosed or told everybody that the cause of the crash was likely or most likely due to pilot error. Meaning the pilot made some sort of mistake, and that was、uh, that was why the plane crashed. It was his fault. Yep, and they're saying this was likely the cause, so they don't know for sure one hundred percent. That's because dead men tell no tales.、Uh, they can't look up John F. Kennedy Jr. to ask him, "Hey, why exactly did you crash in that、yeah. crash?" No,、nope, they're just all dead, and they probably did not have a black box like they do on bigger planes. So they just don't really know for sure. But they're thinking here that. Spatial disorientation and pilot error were the causes of the crash. If you talk about spatial disorientation, basically, you don't know what is up or down, what is left or right,、yeah. what is forward and backward. You're disoriented, and when you're dizzy, if you spin in circles maybe twenty times and then try to stand still, you're going to be dizzy. You're going to be disoriented. Yeah. So he actually thought he was flying up. When he was flying down, and he he just crashed into the ocean that way, the weather was really bad. So it says here that Kennedy's attempt to land that night was obscured or covered by inclement weather conditions. He couldn't see, so he was, I think, relying on the instruments in his plane, but maybe they weren't working correctly either. 
and so he couldn't just look out the window or through the windshield and figure out what was going on. It was so cloudy he couldn't see anything, and he ended up actually going purposely taking the the plane down too low when he thought he was actually going up. It's really very very sad. So there was inclement weather. Inclement is a word you'll sometimes see, but only when it's connected to weather. I've never seen it connected to other things. So we always talk about inclement weather, which just means unpleasant. Maybe cold, maybe wet, maybe snowy, maybe too cloudy. Just really not easy to see through. Yeah, just bad weather, basically inclement weather. And it was because of this that、uh, visibility was very low.、Mm. Visibility just refers to how far you can see.、Uh, sometimes when there's fog on the ground, we have low visibility.、Mm. Uh, that's why they say that you should always drive carefully when you're in the mountains because of the fog. There is low visibility, or if there's a snowstorm, there might be low visibility. Or sometimes when the air pollution is bad, there might be low visibility.、Yeah. And in this particular case, he couldn't see very far, so he didn't have any visual cues. If you're in an airplane, you're trying to find places to orient yourself with lights on the ground. Usually, if you're flying at night, but. For example, they're giving city lights here. He just couldn't see them, so he was disoriented. He did not know up from down, left from right, back to front. He just didn't know where he was. Yeah, you could also say、uh, he had a lack of visual landmarks. Landmarks are really、uh, famous points that you can see. If I'm out walking and I get turned around, I always look for Taipei One Hundred One, and then I know where I am. It's my visual cue. He was an amateur pilot. He He wasn't a professional. He had not completed all of his training, so he really made a bad call, a bad decision to actually fly that plane in bad weather. He was someone who could fly fine if the weather was great, but he didn't have enough experience. He wasn't fully trained to fly in bad conditions when there's bad weather. That is so sad. But they just thought, oh, it's really close. It's very close to go from Martha's Vineyard, which is in the main area, Massachusetts area, excuse me.、Mm. And he was flying back to New York City, where they both lived. Well, darn it!、Um, as a result, he became disoriented. We're going to talk about what happened when that took place. But first, guys, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Come back. Don't be disoriented. You know where we are. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们继续来看这篇文章，谈到高空惊魂记。提到了这个高空惊魂记，主要还是因为 Discovery 频道这边有一个新的节目，谈到飞机安全大调查。那我们再来要谈的也是一个意外事故，这是发生在1999年。1999年，当时有一个重要的飞机失事事件，主角呢是 John Kennedy。好，当然他是小约翰·甘乃迪。他当时跟他的太太、跟他的姐姐呢，在飞机上，结果传出飞机失事。可是飞机残骸是一直到十九号之后才被发现。那我们来看看。这个地方的剧情也很重要，因为呢，七月十七号飞机失事之后，是隔了两天才被发现。那 It wasn't until July nineteenth that 这个剧情本身其实是一个分裂剧。我们知道分裂剧的最大特色就是你要强调的这个部分会放在 it is 或者是 was 跟后面的 that。中间那强调的可能是一个时间，像这个地方就是强调七月十九号，可是呢，它是 not until 放进来，也就是说是一直到七月十九号才怎么样？这样的剧情要特别注意，因为我们常常在写翻译句的时候，中文要对成英文，这个剧情上要稍微转换一下。如果你要选择用分裂句来写，写法就像这样。好，再来，我们继续往下读。下面呢，当然后来有一些失事的报告提到问题在哪里，可能跟飞行员的疏失，还有
空间迷向有关系。好，那这边呢，下面第二段就提到了说 ，Kelly 其实他本身是业余的飞行员。那当天当然天气并不好，而且能见度也很低，所以他想降落，结果没有成功。而他本身因为是业余的，也没有受到完整的飞行训练，所以说在这个状况来。驾驶飞机当然很容易出问题，不过我们要注意到是这个解释说明里面有一个介系词哦，就是在于 from。我们如果看到他说到当时呢能见度很低 ，low visibility， 然后 low visibility 后面接一个 from， 然后 from 到底是什么意思？其实，在英文里面，介系词 from 往往有一个来自什么原因的含义，因为当时能见度之所以低，是因为 a lack of visual cues， 也就是说，其实呢，它没有那种视觉的线索，这个才是它后面失事的原因。We're still on our break. I think we need some more snacks. We'll be back though. 好、okay, ，Welcome back. We're going to continue talking about John F. Kennedy Jr. Stephanie's heart throb. Yes, even though he's dead now and、he's、has so been cute, dead、though. for oh, he's been dead for about sixteen years now. Yeah, but I still look at his picture. He's so handsome. I wouldn't know that. I don't look at men <laughs> that way. But in any case, here we're talking about the flight that he took with his wife and his sister-in-law,、uh -huh. which would have been、uh, the sister of his wife, and they took off on July sixteenth. But they didn't show up again until July nineteenth, when they found their wreckage floating in the Atlantic Ocean. And later, it was revealed that he was probably suffering from spatial disorientation.、Uh, there was low visibility. There was inclement weather there, and he did not have any visual cues like city lights. And he was also an amateur pilot, so he just didn't know how to fly in these conditions. And as a result of that, he became disoriented, which is related to the word disorientation that we talked about just a few minutes ago. If you're disoriented, basically, you lose your sense of direction. You don't know north, south, east, west. You don't、mm -hmm. know up, down. You just don't know where the heck you are. That's true,、uh, and also for college students, your first year, they'll often have what we're called, what is called, an orientation session, where they'll tell you where everything's located, what to expect from school, and if you、uh, start a new job, they'll often、uh, have an onboarding where they give you an orientation. They talk about the company and things like that. Well, he didn't know where he was, darn it, and he lost sight of the horizon. That's that line. Where、uh, the ocean meets the sky—that's the horizon. So、uh, sadly, they crashed, and his lack of training and stress from not being able to properly judge his location resulted in a horrific spiral into the ocean. Oh, they even figured out his plane spiraled into the ocean. Probably did. It was I didn't horrific. Read that. Yeah,、uh, horrific just causes horror, and horror, of course, is something very, very scary. So horror is a noun, though, and horrific is an adjective. There you go. So、mm. it was horrific.、Uh, it was a spiral here, which is、uh, most often used as an adjective, like a spiral staircase, for example. Or my hair has spiral curls. Okay, yeah, like yeah. a spiral staircase, like a spring, basically. Yeah. And、uh, the plane was going down in that orientation, zhu 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 zhu, kind of spinning,、uh, as if going down the drain in a、yeah. sink, and it crashed into the ocean. And that was very tragic. All three of them died, and their bodies have been sent to the cemetery. Well, now we're going to move on to another plane crash. It says here, not all plane crashes end so tragically. However, yes, indeed, plane crashes oftentimes result in the deaths of all the passengers and all the crew. But、uh, it doesn't always happen that way. Uh -huh. uh, way back on August second in two thousand five, authorities. Gave Air France Flight 358 the all clear to land at Canada's Toronto Pearson International Airport, regardless of the severe weather. So, of course, when a plane is trying to crash, 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. When the plane is trying to land, and no plane wants to crash no. on purpose, but unless you're you know terrorists or something、yeah. like that. But in this case, we've got the authorities or the air traffic controllers. They gave them the okay to land, even though there was really inclement weather or severe weather going on in Toronto that day. So yes, we're talking about authorities.、Uh, those are people in charge. They're people in charge of the government. In this particular case,、mm-hmm. the people in charge. Of air traffic, yeah. If you're given the all clear to do something, it means they've checked everything. Everything looks good and safe. Go ahead. So the all clear,、uh, you can get the all clear、um, if maybe your doctor says I don't want you walking on your foot until that bone heals completely. You might go get a checkup, and he says, "Okay, you got the all clear for me," which means you have permission to go ahead. You'll be okay. Well, the traffic controllers in the air traffic control tower, they said, "Hey, everything looks good, even though the weather's bad. We're giving you the all clear. Go ahead. You have our permission to land, regardless of the severe weather." So we know that there was some bad weather going on. There was turbulence from high winds. Turbulence is the word we use when the wind is so strong that it actually moving around. The plane moves around a lot in the sky, and sometimes people inside the plane even move around in their seats. And if you don't have your seatbelt on, you may bet be、uh, pushed out of your seat up into the ceiling of the plane. So that's why you、mm. have to wear your seatbelt. Indeed, and sometimes that does happen. But、uh, pilots are trained to control these situations. But sometimes. It's almost impossible for them to control the turbulence. Yeah.、Uh, turbulent is、uh, the adjective form, but turbulence here is the noun, and、uh, they had turbulence there. Air blowing all over the place from those high winds. It was raining really hard, and there were thunderstorms. There was thunder and lightning. It hampered the pilot's visibility. To hamper means to hinder or to reduce or limit. So in any case here, the pilot just couldn't see where. The The plane was going.、Nope. He or she could、yeah. not see the runway clearly, and as a result, they overshot the runway by over half its length. If you overshoot something, you basically go too far. Like if you try to shoot a three-point shot and the basketball goes way over the hoop <laughs> and into the crowd、yeah. behind, that is overshooting the basket. You can overshoot things that aren't athletic or、uh, related to balls. You can overshoot your budget by spending too much. Spending more than you planned, so they they went too far on the runway.、Uh, they overshot it by half over half its length, so they really were in、uh, sad shape. Consequently, as a result, the plane careened off the runway and came to rest in a creek. I'm not even going to try to say the name of that creek. Uh, how do you say that again, Tom?、Uh, well, we asked our writer, who happens to be a Canadian, and she said, "A Toby Coke, a Toby Coke Creek, which is、uh, a little small river、uh, running next to the airport. There, that's what a creek is." Or you could also say a brook, b r o o k. It's the same thing. It's just a very small little river. Yeah. And that's where the plane came to rest. Oh,、after. let's talk about careen though. Careen、oh, yeah. means you move very quickly, but you're out of control. So that's a good word or verb to use if you have a crash. If you careen into something or careen off of something. That's right. When I was、uh, driving a golf cart too fast one time, it careened around the corner and it fell down.、Uh, fortunately, though, I didn't get hurt. But in any case, here, yes, the plane careened off the runway, and then it stopped in this creek there,、mm-hmm. Etobicoke Creek, which was 300 meters beyond the runway. Wow! Now, when the aircraft landed, its jet fuel ignited, which means it basically started to burn. It exploded. It burned to ignite a fire, for example. Usually, in a fast fashion or a violent fashion, it ignited. Maybe it even exploded. Nevertheless, even though this happened, all 297 passengers, as well as 12 crew members, evacuated the plane in less than two minutes. Wow! Narrowly escaping a fiery death.、Uh, to evacuate just means to leave a dangerous area. Sometimes, when typhoons hit Hualien or other places,、mm. people need to be evacuated from their homes. 
Okay, so that's a pretty amazing escape they had. I can't believe that. In less than two minutes, that's a lot of people. For more staggering survival stories like these, be sure to check out Discoveries: Why Planes Crash this April. That's when it's going to be on TV.、Uh, if you're talking about staggering, the verb means to move or walk in a very unsteady way, like you're about to fall. People who are drunk will often stagger around. Once you get out of bed in the morning, if you're still asleep, you might stagger around trying to wake up. Here it means something that really is shocking, hard to believe. It's staggering when you hear it. You're like, "Wow!" So, if you want to see some more of these staggering stories, you need to tune into the program "Why Planes Crash." Right now, guys, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. 我们继续来看这个飞机失事的事件。我们在讲一个事件，在描述的过程里面，要特别留意的，当然有很多的文法概念啦、句型啦。可是还有一个字，有一种字汇要特别注意的，就是 transitional adverbs 或者是 transitional phrases， 也就是转折词。那转折词的使用很重要，像这边在交代说。这因果之间还用到 as a result， 也就是前面提到的这些诸端的原因哦。然后呢，结果好、哦、让 John Kennedy Jr. 就变成 disoriented， 也就是失去了他方向的定位，导致他迷航，然后最后飞机坠机。那这个地方呢，又提到下面说到 his lack of training， 也就是训练不足，还有呢 the stress from not being able to properly judge his location， 也就是这个压力来自于他无法很正确的判断他的位置，这两种影响之下呢，导致了他可怕的螺旋式坠海，看到 resulted in。当然 ，resulted in 这个动词非常的重要，它也是在交代一个因果的关系。前面的因造成了后面的果，那要记得的就是 result in， 它是不会用被动的，它一定是用主动语态，相当于是 lead to 或者是 cause， 也就是造成、导致。好，接下来下面这一段，我们提到了这两个事件都非常的悲惨，不过其实也不见得如此，有时候还蛮幸运的。以下的第三个例子就是一个结果呢，还好并没有造成伤亡的一个很幸运的故事。时间是2005年，那我们看到这个事件本身，它当时的发生的地点是在加拿大。他说：“其实当天的天气状况非常的不好，可是尽管天气状况很糟糕、很恶劣，这个管理单位还是给当时这架法国航空三五八号班机险情解除的这样的信号。我们看到这里有一个片语，就是 regardless of。我们有时候可能会用别的片语来取代，最常用的就是 in spite of。那解释是一样的，都表示。”尽管怎么样，不管怎么样，尽管这天气相当的糟糕，还是给了他可以降落的信号。这个事件后来我们再来看下面的原因哦。他说，当时呢有乱流，而这个乱流的来源是来自于什么呢 ？From high winds, heavy rain, and thunderstorms。我们现在又看到一个 from 这个介系词了。我们前面一段也提到。From 往往会表示一个原因，来自什么的关系。那这个地方也是一样，他说到的乱流是因为当时有疾风、有豪雨、有大雷雨，所以造成乱流，然后也阻碍了他们的视线，所以他们才会错过原本预定降落的地点，甚至于呢还超过了跑道一半的距离。好，这个地方我们注意到了，接下来我们说到结果如何，又来一个。所谓的 transitional word， 也就是转折词 ，consequently， 结果怎么样呢？结果这个飞机呢，真的就冲出了跑道。OK， 我们今天的讲解就到此结束，谢谢大家。That's it for today. Thank you for joining us.、Uh, this is a very interesting program,、yeah. but、uh, please rest assured that your flight overseas will not experience crashes like these.、Uh, it happens very rarely. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.